Okay, so let me uh, call our meeting together tonight. It's uh, March 19, the hour is 7 p.m. Uh, we're in town hall. Um, let me ask uh, at the outset of our meeting uh, of the select board that all present please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you very much. Um, we have a public hearing uh, leading off here tonight, um, scheduled for 7 p.m. Uh, it is a uh, jointly owned poll petition. The location is 875 East Street. I'm gonna read the legal notice and then we'll uh, get into the particulars of this particular request. Notice is hereby given that the select board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, March 19, 2024 at 7 p.m. in the town hall. 1009 Main Street, Tewksbury, Mass, 01876 on the petition of National Grid, who is proposing to relocate pole 76 and push brace pole 76-89, approximately 18 feet westerly, in order to accommodate electric service upgrade at 875 East Street, Tewksbury, Massachusetts. The customer is requesting to remove the existing private property pole line and go underground. If you have any questions regarding this permit request, please contact uh, Joe Lentiel at um, National Grid. My colleagues should have a list of abutters that were notified of this hearing. There are three on um, the town's abutters list. Um, and then we of course have the um, actual petition as filed by National Grid dated February 26, 2024. So let me welcome you, sir, and I know it's Dave, and I didn't quite catch the last name, so if you can just um, remind us for the purposes of our um, minutes, that would be greatly appreciated. Yes, my name is Dave Boucher, Thank you. Uh, senior designer from National Grid, 1101 Turnpike Street, North Andover. Thank you, and welcome. Thanks for Thank coming you. in. Um, so you, I, we have this schematic, and obviously many of us have sat through these discussions in the past, but just for the purposes of the public and educating people on exactly what's going on here, can you just give us a brief description? Yes, uh, the customer here, it's a market basket. Uh, it's a very large property where they have several um, buildings and transformers and it's all overhead construction. They've come up with a, a new plan uh, with an upgrade for some of their buildings on the private property. Uh, nothing to do with the public way. But with that new design that they want for the property uh, going underground uh, to accommodate the entrance into the property, what we're asking from the town is uh, a movement of one, one of the poles that's in the public way, approximately 18 feet, uh, two poles, 18 feet um, westerly on East Street. Um, the, pole 76 and the push brace pole 76-89. Uh, that will enable us to go forward with the plan uh, and accommodate the design that they want uh, on the pr private property. Uh, in time, I'm not, we don't, I don't have a uh, time frame for you, but the old pole 76 and old pole 76-89 will be removed uh, in the long run once all the new infrastructure is in place and we re we're ready to switch over from all overhead to underground yeah. uh, where the new poles are uh, located uh, where we're asking for tonight. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much uh, the job. If you had uh, any questions, I could try yeah. to answer them. Have the um, underground lines been installed yet or no, nothing yet? Uh, on the private property, uh, I don't know how far along they are with the uh, construction, um, okay. but um, the... Uh, they may have done some of the, 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 the work uh, already uh, in, in places where they can do it uh, okay. and, and get, it, get the, the skeletal framework in there, you know, yeah. kind of. Okay, do my colleagues have any questions? I have some. Mr. Mr. Uh, Holland? Mr. Chairman. Now, are there any sidewalks where you're putting these poles in? Um, 
or potential sidewalks, I should say? I did not see that uh, when I when I looked at that. Uh, I did not notice whether there were sidewalks there. But it is the side of the road, and it would be <coughs> a, a, as far, let's just say, from the um, uh, pavement as it is now. Uh, we're not going to go any closer to the road or further away because we need to keep the poles, you know, in a straight line. As well, much the reason as I ask the question is if, if about there the sidewalks. Are sidewalks that eventually go in, we want them further enough in so one of the plows that does the sidewalks can get through. And you need to go uh, around the pole. A lot of times the towns will want that five feet you need for a handicap ramp or something if mm -hmm. that ever goes in or something like that. And that is right kind of near where the the curb goes into the property too. So um, we, I, I can't say that the exact spot is going to be in the middle of a sidewalk or not, but we try to avoid it. I, we had an issue one time with uh, here in Tuxbury. I can remember one of the poles that we had put on Shawshin Road. We mentioned that yeah. a little earlier. That we, I believe we resolved it um, in the end. I did get involved with one, one of those poles that was near the uh, near the end of a line. I can remember that, but. Um, I can make a note here that make sure that the pole is. Uh, yep. um, That'd be appreciated. Yeah, up, yeah. not uh, at least yeah. off the sidewalk if possible, as far as possible. Yeah. There's no sidewalk. Yeah. All right, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Mr. Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, Mr. Holland touched on the sidewalk piece. There are not sidewalks there now, but I wanted to ask the town manager uh, two questions through you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one is, has the DPW weighed in on this? And two is, are are we aware of any plans or is this currently on our sidewalk plan? <laughs> I'd have to go back. The DPW should have weighed in on it. And if they, if they didn't, I can you can make it subject to their um, review and approval. And I'd have to check the sidewalk plan to, to, to make sure. Okay. Thank you. But I can do that. Uh, and then my, my second question, you did touch on... Uh, when you were giving your explanation, it's appreciated because we have had concerns about removal of old poles. Um, is there a ballpark of when you think this project may be completed? Uh, I can't speculate on that. I mean, anything. Are we saying uh, maybe a year, six months, maybe two years, like ballpark? I'm not, um, be truth truthful, I'm not involved in the actual construction part and I don't, I'm not there when we do these projects to, you know, witness how long it's going to take. Um, as soon as possible is a good answer. I mean, it's kind of like the best thing. We don't want it there any more than, um, and it also depends on, uh, than, than the town does or anybody that's walking by. I mean, it's unsightly having double poles there yeah. or poles that are so close. Uh, plus it's a hazard. I mean, anybody ever went off the road, they, you know, uh, if the pole's gone, they're not going to hit it. I don't know. But there's, um, also, uh, the other utilities you got to think about too. We are waiting for them to move off of the old pole before uh, it gets removed. Not us, but the telephone company who removes the poles. So it will be once electric, cable TV, uh, fiber optic, um, and it goes through the engine system that we have that uh, I believe your fire department has access to. You can, we can watch it. And, and, and then it goes to the telephone company and then, then it gets on their schedule to remove the old pole uh, once they transfer it to the new one too. So um, we are dependent upon those utilities and that's why I kind of, um, I know that that's the fact. I'm not in the, uh, you know, like no, once I, again, I don't want to speculate. <laughs> Yeah, but no, as I, soon as I, possible is always the uh, uh, the answer I can give you. But no, I, I can appreciate yeah. that. It's um, again, we have had issues with old poles being left in the past, so that's why I did appreciate the comment of this is a request to introduce a new pole and remove the old pole. So uh, that yep. that was a very important part for me, uh, and I'm sure others. So I just wanted to make sure that we're we're actually going to ensure that the pole gets removed. I know that there are other owners; it's a jointly owned pole, but. Um, I guess I would have a follow-up question through you, Mr. Chairman, to the town manager. Do we have any sort of internal process that we can follow up on these polls and make sure they're being removed? Would that be a DPW item, or how would we kind of get some assurance that this is being tracked to actually be removed? Yeah, we can watch it through the DPW and, and uh, 
my office can make sure we follow up with our um, customer service rep for the uh, area and make sure they're uh, taken care of. So we'll watch it closely. Perfect. Thank you. I, I have a, a really good answer to follow up on that, what you're asking him. Um, the fire department should have uh, still, it's, it's a program called NJUNS. Um, all the towns and cities have it, and they can mm -hmm. monitor the progression uh, because of the fact that they used to be fire lines on the towns and cities. Um, there's not too many anymore, but they still are out there. They still exist, and um, your fire department should have access to that. And if you don't, you can talk to the liaison that we have uh, for your town. I'm not sure who it might be. It could be Shamad. It could be um, Elena. Uh, but if, if you know who that is, they may be able to, um, you know, direct you towards how to get that information from that NJUNS program uh, awesome. and straighten things out and make Appreciate the it. communication better. Yes. Thank you very much, okay. Mr. Chairman. I don't want to beat this to death that you know we're already talking about it but you know every time these poles get moved the first thing I'm asking about is the sidewalks and where they're being moved I did go by the location a number of there's just grass out there but it's a large property that's owned by market basket and there's plenty of room out there so there's plenty of property to move it and give the enough distance to have the, the location I checked to see if the the poles that are out there now a couple of them are in that, if we installed the sidewalk, they'd be right in the middle of the path of it. Um, so they weren't put where they should be, should have been put originally. Right. Uh, and there's so much room out there that shame on them for not doing it because it's, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it looks like a field out there. That's how much land's out there. So you can put it out. Um, spe specifically, the new pole is going to go by the driveway. Um, mm -hmm. Our goal as a board has been to put sidewalks as many places as possible. I'm sure this is not on the top of the priority list because it's near a commercial development and there's not a lot of walking that goes up there, but we will get to it eventually. And my concern is you got trucks going in and out of there. If they're gonna put it in, you have to make it ADA compliant. You have to have, a th and this pole is going right on the corner of where the driveway would be. Please make sure that it's put back because, and when we get around to it, we will be asking them to be moved. So you might as well do it now before we call you and say these poles need to be relocated. It's very difficult to relocate a pole with cable, electric, every, I understand everything that goes on. Yeah. Just to move one of these poles is probably gonna take you two months to get all the utility companies to relocate. Uh, but if you would just do it the right way the first time, that would be beneficial to us. Yeah, I, I, I follow what you're saying. There's a lot of uh, sins of the past, if you will, uh, where they were some of the, a lot of the poles have been placed, but going forward, if we're going to move a pole, put it in the right spot right, right away, or the best spot that's further off the where a potential sidewalk would be. I, I get that. Yeah, well, Verizon yep. should know that Tewksbury is paying attention to this, and my board members brought it yep. up. So, anytime something you bring in a drawing to us, you may want to bring that into consideration next time you're coming. The sidewalk. We are going to bring it up yeah. every single time. Okay. You know, so. Is, that would be helpful. I'll let uh, Joe, Joe, the engineer who uh, designed yep. this, uh, let him know to make right. sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this is a public hearing, so um, I want to uh, ask if the one resident in the room has any comments on this particular matter. I see a head saying no, so thank you. Um, all right, so uh, with that, let me ask if there's a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. moved. Okay, the motion uh, for the records offered by Ms. Wellman, seconded by Mr. Crapman. Um, fortunately, we have everyone in the room tonight, so we'll do this on a voice vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well, so that's a unanimous five to zero um, for the purposes of our recording secretary. Um, thank you. Okay. Have a great <coughs> night. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to oh, approve the petition of National Good Grid. Grief. To relocate pole 76 and push brace pole 7689. Thank you. Appreciate that. Are we going to add, add yes. to DPW? Uh, to uh, friendly yes, amendment. friendly amendment, yeah, at the um, pending the um, approval and cons consultation and approval of the okay. DPW. Yep, my apologies. Second. All right, so we have a motion offered by Ms. Wellman, seconded by Mr. Mackey. So um, again, that's approval subject on. 
DPW's uh, review and approval. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The chair votes aye. Thank you. I'm, I'm so used to doing roll calls, you got me <laughs> off my game. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, any residents tonight that wish to speak? I don't see anyone who rises now, so we'll move to new business. That brings us to the acceptance of a donation um, to the Tewksbury Police Domestic Violence Fund. This was a $100 donation made by Jane and Jack Sullivan in memory of Jean Dockray Carr to the um, fund that I just mentioned. Um, and this fund is used to help victims of domestic violence in uh, the need of a hotel room, clothes, toys for children, et cetera. Um, and um, the fund is primarily made up of um, uh, funds from the Mahoney Fund historically. So this would supplement the existing fund that is in existence. So um, could I ask for a motion to uh, accept the $100 donation? And I assume we'll ask the town manager to send a letter of gratitude. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, the motion's offered by Mr. Mackey, seconded by Mr. Holland. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed to that? That's a five to zero vote with the chair voting in the affirmative as well. Okay, that brings us to the town manager. And you want to touch on sure. overall financial policy update? I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I have uh, passed out uh, an updated um, uh, overall financial management policy uh, that the board adopted uh, some time ago. Um, the reason for the update was just to make sure we're current in our approach to the town finances and um, what we're currently doing in regard to town finances. And this, the changes that you have tonight really focus uh, mostly on um, other post-employment benefit obligations and uh, how the town approaches funding of what is called our OPEB unfunded liability. So um, the first change isn't until page three. And um, what we did here, and this, is, uh, this was worked on by myself and the town accountant, uh, and this, I sh should step back, this is something that our OPEP actuary who does our valuation every couple of years recommended we do to incorporate um, more information in our financial policy on how we're going to address our OPEB unfunded liability because that's what our rating agencies want to see. So when Standard & Poor's uh, reviews our bond rating, they want to see that we actually have a policy uh, on how we're going to address the unfunded liability. So on number two on page three, um, the area that you see uh, with the strike through, the reason why that's taken out, it was essentially moved to the end of the policy. We're not eliminating it from the policy. We moved it to the end and we reworded it to um, reflect what we're doing today uh, in our finances. Number four was added to essentially say, after we go through all of our uses uh, within this policy for free cash, uh, the board um, may uh, use some of the free cash uh, and put it into the OPEB trust fund to help the OPEB liability. It's not a requirement, but it's just after you do all the things, if there's a uh, free cash that uh, you want to utilize, uh, that's something we will look at. Uh, we haven't had that opportunity in the past because we've been using free cash to address capital uh, uh, projects, capital equipment, one-time expenditures, and building our stabilization fund. But you may get to the point, um, and we may get to the point that we feel we can use some of our free, free cash that's left uh, over to uh, help fund the OPEB liability. Moving further down uh, to the next page, under K, we just changed the threshold in which we probably would borrow uh, funds for from twenty-five dollars to $100,000. Mm -hmm. And even at $100,000, we're probably not going to borrow funds for. We'd be higher, but didn't want to tie anybody's hands. So uh, definitely, we would never borrow funds for $25,000 um, or less. But $100,000 um, was uh, a good number to, uh, to go with for now. Um, uh, based on how we looked at it. 
Uh, and we usually don't borrow funds for anything, uh, frankly, less than a million dollars. Um, we've always uh, uh, used our stabilization fund or free mm -hmm. cash. Then um, the next area that uh, was changed, this is where we added the new language in for uh, OPEB. The strike through that you see was my original text and then the town accountant updated it to uh, what's below. Uh, and essentially it just says that uh, we uh, fund uh, our OPEB on a pay-as-you-go basis, which means each year we just fund it as we go. We don't, uh, we're not funding it to the, to the required amount that the actuary would like to see because that's in the millions of dollars and we're just not at that point. So we fund it on a pay-as-you-go pay um, at a minimum of $650,000, which is what is in the budget. <clears throat> the water and sewer enterprise funds and the cable enterprise funds fund OPEB based on what the actuary um, recommends within the valuation each year. Um, and that's what we've been doing. So they meet the obligation, uh, which is uh, good for the town. And then uh, the funds are transferred into the OPEB um, post-employment uh, post benefits trust fund. And then the last item, which is uh, subsection I, essentially says that, um, and this is something that was important when we talked to our actuary and it's something important for the rating agencies. They want to know that, what do you, how are you really going to fund this in the future? When are you going to fund it by? And when we pay off our retirement unfunded liability somewhere around 2035, that amount will be shifted over to pay for OPEB. And then uh, by doing that, we should have OPEB uh, unfunded liability addressed by 2055. Uh, so those of you who are here then uh, will have the uh, pleasure of uh, seeing that paid off. Uh, we also state in this section that obviously we will um, use other funds, uh, surplus funds, to help uh, pay down our OPEB liability, whether it's use of free cash in, in any surplus we may have at the end of the year in our town in school um, uh, health insurance funds, as well as any budgetary surplus and no uh, overlay surplus that we have. Uh, so those are really the essence of the changes. And that's it. Okay, thank you for that summary. Let me open it up to my colleagues if there are any questions. Anyone? No? Um, no? Um, I have a question, Mr. Chairman, through okay, you to Ms. the Roman. manager. Yep. Um, are you... Do you want us to adopt this tonight? Do you want us to, I mean, I think it'd be good to have a little. Um, whatever the board would like. You can uh, think about it for a couple of weeks to the next uh, board meeting, uh, however you want to do it. I just wanted to get it, uh, get it on the table one way or another. Okay. Is this, uh, is the language recommended by the actuarial uh, firm? Is this what they're looking for specifically to see? Mm -hmm. Because I so, still want that AAA bond rating. I know. It's going to be tough, but um, the language that is in there for OPEB was pulled out of a policy they recommended. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I wanted didn't, to... Have... I didn't want to create a separate policy. I wanted it all in an enc one encompassing policy, mm -hmm. so I took the language from that policy and incorporated it here. The other language they had in the policy, we already had in our policy. Okay. So this was just the area. Is, are there any other recommendations that are non-OPEB related that we should consider amending on this policy list? No, everything, this policy originally when we did it um, was reviewed by our um, uh, audit firm mm -hmm. and it's been reviewed in the past um, by our um, uh, financial advisors when we um, uh, meet with Standard & Poor's. So no one's recommended any other changes except uh, try to get more specific on uh, <coughs> OPEB. Um, when was the last time this was amended? Probably within the last four or five years. Okay. Yeah. Um, I note that under item I, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the stabilization fund, I'm wondering if it makes any sense at some point to revisit those um, target percentages as a percent of operating budget just in, in light of the times that we live in. Um, I know it's proportional, but... I wonder if we should increase that to 5 to 7% or something along We can look at that. We can look at that and come back at the next meeting. If you wouldn't mind seeing what the implications of that might be. Um, these policies, I know, were grown out of a number of um, financial difficulties this town experienced many years ago prior to your arrival, Mr. 
Montori, and they have been um, essential guiding documents for the board over the years. And so staying on top of them, I think it's in, re in refreshing this language and making these changes is ideal, and I appreciate that effort. Thank you. So let me just um, offer a comment, um, and I, I don't know what my colleagues intend to do. I, um, this is my last opportunity to mm. vote on it, that I know for sure. So um, I would uh, certainly want to at least express my um, wholehearted support for adoption of these changes, um, whether um, I'm, I have the privilege to do that tonight or um, I would urge my colleagues <clears throat> to do so at a near meeting. Um, as Ms. Wellman noted, um, there was a time when we didn't have policies like this in place and our town was in very difficult financial straits. Um, the board, um, whether it includes the people at this table, our predecessor board members, um, saw fit to create a foundation. And this document is literally the foundation of our sound financial policies. Um, and we've adhered to it through the town meeting process um, for many years now. If you look around and you read the newspapers and you watch um, the local news and the neighboring communities that are now experiencing significant financial stress, um, we are not. And knock on wood, hopefully that will continue. But in large part, it's because of the foundation that was built and these policies that have been adhered to. So I, I really want to stress that um, the town has enjoyed a run here of strong financial management and strong, a strong fiscal footing. And this is the foundation of it that, um, in my opinion, this board should not um, ignore. I think it would be enormously beneficial for Tuxbury if we could get to that AAA bond rating. Huge, or would be a huge accomplishment. Um, and the, in the meetings that I've sat in over the years with the bond rating agencies, um, the primary thing that they are critical of our community and many others is the um, subject of OPEB obligations. So anything that we can do to bring clarity to our <coughs> intention and document our plan on that is going to hopefully um, make them feel more comfortable. So I urge my colleagues to adopt those changes, whether it's tonight or another night. Um, but I think this is strong financial work, and it will benefit the community for years to come. And Mr. Chairman, may I, uh, just to give some history, the, the original document was adopted in um, 2013. Um, we revisit when the board um, updated all of their policies, if you remember that. It was updated in uh, late 2018, so yeah. Um, yeah. that's been the progression. Yeah. Okay. So if there's no other comments. Uh, I just have a quick comment. comment. <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate your comments, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I, I always take your, uh, your opinion very seriously, and I will continue to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, I have a couple of questions. It's not something I'm mean, getting a policy change on the day of making a vote. I'm just not in favor of just doing that. It seems something that's everything seems in line, but I do have a couple of questions with some of the changes that are like labeled out here that I would like to talk with the town manager about and just to say, you know, it's, I see that the cable at the prize fund and a couple of other things are put in there that I would like to clarify before voting on, before we make a policy change. Mm -hmm. um, but this is something that, you know, I think all of us are in favor of, of trying to pay down that. But I think, like, you know, if we're going to get something that's handed to us to vote on it the same day, I, I just would have liked to, to ask a few more questions to dig into it before voting on it. Okay. Um, so, um, if there's no other discussion, Mr. Kratman, let me ask if you have a motion to offer to table the matter. Uh, I got a motion to table the matter to our, uh, to our next meeting. Second. We have a second on that? We do. So, Mr. Kratman offers the motion. Mr. Holland offers the second. All those in favor of tabling the matter, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed to that? We'll consider that a unanimous vote. 
I think correct? so, yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. And uh, any questions you have, let me know, and I'll uh, address them before the next meeting. Thank you. Um, okay. The next item uh, that I wanted to just update the board on, um, we, um, as the board knows, we had gone out uh, with the request for proposals for uh, recreation programs and activities. <coughs> uh, proposals were due um, at the, towards the end of February. Um, we received two interested parties. One was an organization called Chess Wizards who are based out of Illinois with, um, uh, with activities and, and uh, staff in uh, Massachusetts and as well as other states, and uh, the Lowell YMCA. I'm gonna just talk about, uh, both were very, very good proposals, uh, very different, uh, and I wanna just talk about chess wizards for us because that's probably the easiest to discuss and uh, the one we're gonna, is easiest to move forward with. Um, chess Wizards is a group that essentially teaches chess to young children, uh, uh, ages uh, five to 12, I believe. And uh, they have programs in towns, uh, many towns in Massachusetts. They're an hour long and they run for eight weeks, eight to 10 week sessions. Um, there's a fee to, um, to go to their um, classes or their programs. It's somewhere between $21 and $26 a session or an hour, uh, again, for eight to 10 weeks. Um, they are not a group that would run multiple activities. They do one very specific uh, thing. And it's an enrichment program where they teach chess and uh, children play each other from various ages and um, we uh, think it'd be a good program to offer the residents. It's something that um, the library, um, through uh, Diane Giarusso and the library director and Robert Hayes are working on with the children's librarian to uh, bring them in starting sometime in, um, at the end of May or the end of April and to run for eight weeks <clears throat> and see how they do. Um, it'd be just like any other program we offer through the library or through the town. Um, the uh, senior center director, Jan Canole, is interested in having them come to the senior center, whether it's offering chess to kid, children there to intermingle with the seniors or to do something with the seniors. So um, it's just a unique program for people who want to learn chess. Um, and uh, so that, that was something that um, we'd like to get going on and they're excited about doing something in town and we actually um, worked on a schedule if it, if it moves forward that uh, they would even do a uh, six-week chess camp in mm -hmm. the summer where uh, kids can go five days a week, a uh, few <coughs> hours a day um, and it's learning to play chess <coughs> and tournaments and uh, just again an enrichment program through uh, chess. So. Um, Myself, the assistant town manager, town clerk, uh, town planner, and library director all um, met them and thought it was a great opportunity uh, to offer the, uh, the residents in the community. Uh, so, when it, so, so that was one uh, area. Then we met with the YMCA at Lowell, uh, who we've met with in the past. Um, they were interested in coming into the town a few years back when the Alphabest was brought in for the, by the schools uh, for early uh, for um, morning and afternoon um, um, uh, care as well as uh, summer programs. <coughs> They've been interested in uh, expanding uh, their operations. Uh, so they um, came in and they provided um, a, a good program that they would like to bring to town if uh, there's interest. And what they would do is they would uh, lease the uh, recreation building and they will offer programs out of the recreation building and down at Livingston Street. Um, they would like to, uh, if uh, all goes well and, and everyone's comfortable, uh, move forward sometime in uh, April, late April, uh, or later, depending on how the board feels and when we're comfortable, uh, throughout the summer, and then they probably really get going in the fall because that would start to build upon their early, early programs. And what they would do is they would run programs such as um, 
Lego classes or Lego programs for an hour. They would run a Pokemon and magic um, um, program for an hour, one day during the week, dance classes, art classes, um, soccer skills classes, flag football skill cl uh, programs, not to compete with our youth sports, but just as skill programs for, for kids who don't want to maybe get into a more competitive, but would do this. Mm -hmm. um, and they have some other um, things that they would offer, but initially they would start with something like this. But they're not going to just target, their plan is not to just target uh, children. Um, they want to uh, target adults too, and they would offer classes down at the recreation uh, center. Uh, that would that would be stuff like um, beginner yoga, cardio kick, kick it fusion, chair pose, core and more type classes, um, uh, balance classes, uh, uh, more advanced yoga, Zumba, low impact cardio. So they would run those programs both during the day and possibly in the evening. So that they're not just going to come in and run activities for children. They want to do it for adults also. Um, and they have um, the staff to do it, um, similar to um, the uh, chess wizards. They would do everything. They would sign up the people. They would organize it. They would get quarries on everybody. Um, we would just be the, here's the location, run the operation. Um, so it seems like it would be a good fit. Um, it could start off with, uh, you know, some of these programs, start off small, get input on what other programs we'd like to see. Uh, the way they would run it, they would have advanced uh, sign up for Tewksbury residents. Um, and then if the class is in full, they would open it up to members of the Y, not to the, they're just the people who are in the Y. Uh, because similar to what we do with programs, possibly at the senior center, what other towns do with their recreation, they don't always fill it with residents of the community. They open it up to the surrounding areas. Um, so this was something that um, they, um, they brought forward. We thought it was a great opportunity to uh, provide uh, programs and activities. Um, and, um, you know, just, you know, we'd like to see it get going in the future. Just want to see what the board wants to do for next steps. Is it budget neutral, Mr. Montori? Budget, if, if anything, it's probably going to generate some revenue because they would, they would probably, they would lease the building as well as, and this is from both organizations, they would do some type of cost share, right. which, you know, I would talk to them about it. It may be something that we say, you know, reduce the rate of the, the cost of the program. You know, we're not, we're not really looking to make the money. We're looking right. to offer the programs at a reasonable rate for the, for the residents. Okay. But it's, it's not costing us anything. Very good. Other questions from board members? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so my first question, first of all, both programs sound like great additions. Um, but the one thing that really jumped out at me was the leasing of the teen center building. And I mean, that building has other uses such as voting as well as the parking lot. So I think that would be a, a, a tough needle to thread with the parking situation and then the impact on potentially on voting is my first. So they know about the voting. They know that it has to be worked around. They know uh, that we have a July 4th, 3rd activities that they actually were excited about when we talked about it. Uh, and they know we have a community market. So they would work around all, all of the schedules we have. Perfect. Um, and they know it's an act, very active place on Saturdays and in the evening for youth sports. Okay, well that actually answered uh, two of the questions and the chair asked my other question about cost neutrality. So I guess my final question is, have they, uh, have you informed them of the potential to lease the Trahan site? Because that is a small yeah. building. They've walked, at, they actually been through both buildings in the past and they seem to, I don't wanna say they're gonna do anything with either site, but they, um, the North Street School seem to, of the two schools, appear to be um, of more interest, but they also understand it's just a big undertaking. So, okay. Thank you very much. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes, I got a couple. Mr. Okay. Crabman, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, um, this sounds like a great addition, but um, I've been in that building a number of times. Um, it needs some renovations. Um, the bathrooms are in pretty rough shape. Um, I know Vinny has been down there and he spent the last uh, month guttering the place out, taking all the things that were, weren't used for many, many years 
that were inside that building. Uh, the tables are gone, the, the chairs are gone, all the old stuff that's in there. Um, do we have funds to purchase new stuff or would they be supplying these type of things? So um, we, we did uh, go in and uh, clean the place out of all the stuff that was there. And um, we painted it, uh, we painted, uh, Vinny had it painted and uh, the tailings, sailing tiles uh, replaced. We have a funding request coming forward to town meeting for new windows and new doors and new flooring. Uh, we know we need to address the bathroom, the restrooms, uh, so we're going we're gonna to work to address those within the budget. Um, and then once we find out that this is going to move, we'll see what type of new, um, what, what type of um, items they need. Uh, and we're going to need to purchase, we're going to need to purchase tables anyways because we got rid of the old ones and whether it's voting or 4th of July or whatever, those tables are needed. So we're going to purchase those things as we, as we get closer to um, uh, uh, you know, the net towards the end of this fiscal year and get all that done. Yeah, that's uh, and great. then whatever they need, they'll, they'll provide their own supplies um, and they're going to walk through the site tomorrow again with uh, the facilities manager and just give us an idea what they want. The long term, little not long term, but the next move would be to uh, look at that kitchen area, which we removed everything out of, um, to see if we want to get that active again as a, uh, a kitchen area. They would like to um, conduct uh, cooking classes uh, at the facility. So um, we're going to look at all that. But you're right, we need to go back and replace some of the play, uh, items we, we, we uh, got rid of with newer. Well, you mentioned April. That's, it just seems awfully quick for them to be able to do that. That's what, that's what my concern was. <laughs> yeah, they, both groups seem to want to um, get going if they, they were hoping for April vacation, uh, but sometime in April so they could at least see how things would get going before the summer and then ramp up for summer programs too. Um, I mentioned that um, I wasn't sure what the time frame would be depending on tonight's meeting. Um, it would be tight for them to um, get things going, but they said if, if they thought there was a positive movement, you know, if you want them to come in on the next meeting, they'd be glad to come in. Um, but if they had an indication that things were looking good, they could they could stop the wheels in motion and come in and see the board and then go from there. That was going to be my next thing is that, um, you know, I know there's a, a very active group that's like uh, asking for additional recreation in this community. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see the group come in and maybe put in a presentation. I mean, we have a number of questions, but it seems like they've been very active spending time talking about this. So if we had them come in, they could ask those additional questions of what was going on. Uh, the other point that I've uh, we've been discussing uh, internally about is the use of we have porta potties down there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many times they get calls during the summertime that the it's so busy down there, it's hot, and we have these things down there. If we get additional revenue, I would love to install additional bathrooms, actual real bathrooms, down there. That you know that we get seniors that are bringing their grandchildren to the park. There's no place to wash your hands down there. The bathrooms are locked most of the time until we have to find a way to make those available mm -hmm. for all the public. And if we get additional revenue, I'd like to see if we could take that fenced area that's around the back. Yeah. There's nothing on that pad. There used to be soda machines and other things. You can gutter that out and add additional bathrooms down there where people can actually wash their hands clean. I mean, just after what we've gone through, it would be a nice be able to... You know, so many little kids down there, you, you can't wash your hands with uh, hand sanitizer, you know? We can definitely look at that as a future uh, project. Yeah, yeah. okay. No, this is going to generate revenue. Where I'd just like to have the residents come in yeah. and ask additional questions if possible. Yeah, that's fine. It's not, I mean, there, we'll, we'll get revenue. It won't be a large amount, but <clears throat> something like that. If, what other, whatever improvements we want to make down there, we'll have the funding, whether it's CPA funding or, um, but, or right. uh, other funding. I would like to look at what the cost is of what we're spending on porta potties. I know it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. And what the overall cost of making a one-time investment of installing actual bathrooms in, I think they could offset each other if we actually got rid yeah, of it because I, porta potties cost a lot of money. I and actually we're constantly that. down there emptying them. So this would be something that could be beneficial. I can get to that. We actually pulled that. We were looking at um, last year's expenses and getting ready for the new year with the um, youth groups and uh, I have that cost. No, we're asking people to use the thing, so I think creating a usable facilities I think would be a big benefit and I'm sure everyone would appreciate it. Okay. I'm done, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Holland. 
Um, I just have a couple of questions. Have they done this in other communities <clears throat> similar to this? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't. I haven't heard that they have. We might be the first that they're trying this out. Okay. Um, I know they run a camp up in Dunstable every summer that is very popular and very successful. Um, but as far as coming in and supplementing uh, activities for another town, um, I don't. I don't know of any. Now, and I think you answered my question a few minutes ago because I heard you say CPA. This is recreation. Even though you're building a bathroom, it's still recreation. Oh, yeah, that's what yeah. we can look at. So it does qualify for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Ms. Wilm. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my colleagues have asked a few of the questions I already had, so I appreciate that. Um, in the programming offering, did they mention anything about music or theater? So, say that one more time. In the program offerings that they had, did they include music or theater programs at all? To your oh, knowledge? Right. They did discuss it. Okay. They did discuss it. We have a call for that in, yeah. in the community, so it would be great to see if they could include, you know, a theater camp or something that would be huge or music. Um, you mentioned the cost share, and I do think that there is something to be said for having that and doing revenue generation um, because we can use those revenues um, operationally to fund ideally a future recreation director. Oh to help us coordinate across all of our properties and all of our facilities. Our, not the care of the facilities, but the use piece of it um, and all of our ball fields and so forth. And we know that there's you know, more need for that. Um, so Mr. Kratman raised an issue um, for uh, bathrooms in that area and that there's a call for that. What I think may be efficacious is if we were to pursue a master plan for the Livingston Street recreational fields and, and, and also include our ball fields on East Street, um, and then if there's opportunities for other ball fields, because we know that there's a need. And so kind of wrapping that in and doing a, maybe a little bit bigger of a piece, not taking a long time to do that, but I do think there's a call for, um, for uh, sanitary facilities at that down there, and, and there may be in other places as well. So I think a master plan might be a good idea. Um, and then finally, with the lease agreement, is the lease agreement going to be something that this board reviews and has to approve, mm -hmm. or is that something that you do? No, nope, I'll, I'll the board review it. Okay. Um, okay because if, if, you, if we're going to bring them in before the next meeting, I'll get it to the board over this weekend. That'd be great. Um, I, some of the concerns I have, I think this, I'm all for this. I think this is great. I think the community will need it. I don't know that... Greater Lowell Y has done this sort of program here, but I've seen this with other Ys in, in neighboring communities offer um, sort of satellite programs. So it's something that the, the organization itself is capable of doing and it's long history of doing. Um, with the lease of that facility, I'm glad that they've communicated they'll work around some of our existing uses that we, um, that we have and that this community relies on and enjoys. Um, and I'm just a little bit curious as to sort of what were, what what are the entanglements with that? So just as a as a protective piece, but I think this is great, and I really appreciate um, you bringing these forward. I think chess withers will be also a really nice, yeah. uh, a really nice thing for a lot of kids in town. So thank you so much. Okay, um, I'll just uh, I'll be brief, but just two two comments, um, and this is more for people not in the room, but hopefully paying attention. Because I too totally support the effort, I'd encourage you to um, make it happen as quickly as you can. Because we do know there's um, a need and there's a desire in the community. And what I want to say to those who might be watching um, and have some passion about this topic um, is, it's important that we crawl before we walk. Right? We can't bite off more than we chew can chew. Um, we're heading into headwinds here with, from a budgetary perspective. The worst thing we could do is um, be over aggressive and then um, a year or two out have to start to cut things. Right. So outsourcing makes a lot of sense um, and having people who are focused on the programs that you described execute them without having us have a learning curve is also a benefit to our community. So I think the crawl before you walk approach is um, very strong. Um, and then uh, not to be um, the skunk at the picnic, but um, this board 
of all the boards in town has a very significant responsibility to look out for the exposures that the town potentially mm -hmm. takes on. And this is an area where there's huge liability risk. So again, having somebody else who has insurance in place, who we can hold responsible for anything that goes wrong um, is, in my opinion, uh, good stewardship for the community. And that can be lost on residents who are looking for services. Um, but we have to provide those services, in my opinion at least, in a way that's um, responsible to protect the entire community. Um, and I, I know that if we do a lease, we'll have proper protections. I also know that these organizations have um, substantial insurance in place to protect um, in the event that something untoward occurs. Um, so that, in my mind, is um, you know sleep insurance as a select board member, right? We have the comfort of knowing that um, we have protection. We can chase somebody else if something goes wrong. Um, and it's the last thing that I wish I had to talk about, but it, we live in a world that's very litigious, and we live in a world where almost every day you see um, hor uh, horrible stories in the news, and we don't need that to happen here. Hopefully it won't, um, but we want to make sure we have business partners that we can hold their feet to the fire. So um, I'll, leave, I'll leave it at that for those two comments. Um, so I gather the consensus sounds like um, we want to continue the discussion. You want to have some further uh, presentation. Um, and if that's the case, we'll just set this matter aside. You'll put it on a future agenda. agenda. Yeah, I'll put it on the next agenda. The next and meeting. I'll tell them um, they should prepare to yeah. you know, you know, at least stop thinking about getting going. So if things work out, go, out, go well on the 9th, then they can hit the ground running on the 10th. Okay. I'll get uh, I'll get information. I'll have town council uh, put together a lease. I'll get that to the board to look at before the tenth, and um, we'll go from there. Okay. Mr. Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just one question. So I completely agree on making sure we have all the I's dotted and T's crossed and getting the uh, the outreach for the residents. But the one that Chess Wizards it does not require a lease. Is that something we can get into? I think Chess Wizards them? could just be a program that's offered like any other program. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's an easy one. Perfect. Yeah, I know you had mentioned April, so I wanted to make sure yeah. that we're not hobbling them if we don't need to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. No, they'll we'll definitely get them going and see what interest there is. They, don't, they need, I think they said, if they get 12 kids in a class, that works for them. You know, Perfect. so. Thank you. Okay. okay, let's move to town council invoices. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have two town council invoices, one from February 1st through February 15th in the amount of $3,102.50. I'd recommend approval. So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion offered by Ms. Wellman, seconded by Mr. Holland. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That's five to zero in the affirmative. The second invoice is from uh, February 16th through February 29th in the amount of $3,187.50, and I would recommend approval. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. All right, we have a motion made by Ms. Wellman, seconded by Mr. Mackey. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The chair votes aye. That's five to zero in the affirmative. Anything else, Mr. Montori? That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we move off of uh, the town manager, I just want to ask something to him. Um, you brought up a good point about news stories and other things that have been happening. And I recently saw a news story about Tewksbury State Hospital about um, the problems they're having up there. Employees were voicing concerns about safety. Uh, the kids are going to be getting up for April vacation very soon. <coughs> We're telling, we're, we're telling families to bring their families to this location. We have the senior center that's right there. We've had a number of instances that are recently in our uh, community of, you know, somebody getting off the property and stabbing somebody, somebody um, um, threatening to kill themselves and other things that have been happening. And it seems like they're overburdened and they don't have enough security. I know our police and fire have made efforts to work with them but it doesn't seem to be enough. Mm -hmm. And prior to us getting to the summer season, 
I would like to see if you could get somebody from Tewksbury State Hospital to come up and see what measures they're putting in place before our kids get out for the summer. The seniors are going to be going down using the senior center. The lot, it's it's the whole facility is cornered by where we send our the seniors and our kids. It's a, you know one entrance is at the library, one entrance is at the senior center, the other one's at the fields. That's scary. And if, they're, and if they're overburdened with all these people and they don't have enough security up there, I'd like to get some answers of what the plan is. Okay. I'll reach out to the um, director and see if we can get someone in uh, for the next meeting. I appreciate that. Thank Our you. Meeting in one meeting <clears throat> after that. Okay, moving on. We have two sets of minutes to approve, Mr. Holland. <clears throat> yes, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for October 7th, 2023. So moved. Do we have a second, second on that? 17th. All yep. right. So we have a motion offered by Mr. Holland, yep. seconded by Mr. Crapman. Yep. Um, approval of the October 17 meeting minutes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's a unanimous five to zero. And I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from January 23rd, 2024. We'll second that. Okay, so the motion's offered by Mr. Hall and seconded by Mr. Crapman again. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That's five to zero again. All right, that brings us to board member reports. Mr. Crapman, do you have anything tonight? Uh, my meeting's a later on in the month, so I don't have anything to report at this okay. meeting. Mr. Mackey? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Wellman. Uh, just one thing, I just want to um, note for the community that there is a town election on April 6th. I want to state that I have great respect for all candidates that put their names forward to participate in this contest to serve our community. And service in elected office isn't easy nor glamorous. Um, it's hard work and requires a measured temperament and thoughtful, empathetic leadership. Not everyone's cut out for it. It is a privilege to serve our community, and I wish all the candidates well and look forward to serving with them in the next year. And I wish to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your service to this board. Over 17 years, 20 years. 15 on this board. 15 on this board, and as town moderator, and on the finance committee, and numerous committees. Um, your leadership and your commitment to our community has been um, exceptional. And it's been Thank a privilege you. to serve with you. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words. <coughs> Mr. Holland. I want to reiterate what Ms. Wellman said about your service. You know, maybe you could start mowing a lawn should have a third career. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Finance committee, you know. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is, uh, although they came up shot, the hockey team, you yeah. know, I think they deserve a shout out because it yeah. takes a lot to get to that game. Yeah. You know, uh, and finally, I want to thank Mr. Mackey and Ms. Wellman and the Andover Board of Selectmen and the Drake Board of his life and that preambulation thing we went to. We all get drunk on, what was it, apple cider? Yeah. <laughs> Non-alcoholic apple oh, cider, Mr. Holland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll be very brief. I just want to thank the community. I've had the privilege, I consider it a blessing to sit at this table, as I said, for 15 years. Um, when I started, um, the town was in uh, financial difficulty. We had a lot of tough issues to wrestle with, and I worked with 14 different board members, um, and four here now tonight among those 14. Um, and um, while I didn't always agree, or they didn't always agree with me, um, we managed to move Tewksbury forward, in my opinion, and I know that we are in a better place today than we were when I first started the journey. Um, I've met people that um, I would not have otherwise met that are residents and fellow Tewksbury community members. I've learned an enormous amount about our community that I would not have learned um, had I not put my name on a ballot and been fortunate enough to be elected. Um, so I am forever grateful for that experience. Um, I encourage residents to get involved, get engaged. You don't have to run for elective office. Serve your community in some way. And if you have the courage, and I underscore that word because it does take courage, if you have the courage to put your name on the ballot, 
um, I urge you to do that because in my opinion, um, there's nothing better than serving your community and helping to make things work. Um, local government, unlike the federal and state level, um, is where the rubber meets the road, right? What we deal with here um, has real impact on everyone's lives each day, whether it's um, approving a poll petition like we did earlier to start this meeting, it has an impact on a major employer in our community. It has an impact on the neighborhood that surrounds that employer where that location was, all the way through the things we discussed um, tonight, like recreation and services to um, young kids in our community, to the seniors that might potentially take advantage of some of those things that we, we mentioned. Um, all of that is um, something that is beneficial to our neighbors and our families and friends that we live with at a local level. So it, um, it's an honor and a privilege. Um, and it's been nothing but a positive experience for me personally. So I am grateful um, to all of my colleagues, past and present. I'm grateful to the town manager, who I think is uh, the best town manager in the region. Um, and I'm grateful to uh, the folks that saw fit to give me their votes time and time again. Um, and lastly, um, or two more uh, comments, I'm grateful to the <clears throat> employees of our, could, our town um, who time and time again step up to get things done. And sometimes they get overlooked or forgotten. Um, but when the pipe breaks at 2 in the morning, mm -hmm. they're the ones who show up. When um, you have a health problem at home um, at you know, one in the afternoon, the fire department and the ambulance are always there. Um, and when something goes wrong and you need uh, public safety in the form of a police officer, um, they always show up. So um, I want to thank those people um, across the board because we are fortunate to have um, a lot of really good and dedicated town employees. And lastly, I just want to thank my family and especially my wife, who um, sacrificed in ways that many people don't appreciate. Um, I got to do something that I enjoy by coming here night after night and spend the time that we all spend in this um, capacity. Um, but that requires you to be away from your family. Um, so they sacrifice in a different way. Um, and I'm grateful and enormously grateful, especially to my, to my wife for putting up with that for as long as she did. Um, so I want to thank all of you for your kind words um, and support. I wish you all well. Um, I'm really, really proud of what we all as a community accomplished um, over my tenure, and I look forward to seeing um, a lot of good work in the future by future members of this board. Um, so with that, um, I'll close my comments. Um, we are going to move into executive session. Um, and when we do that, we will have a discussion around collective bargaining. And when we exit executive session, we will be adjourning the open meeting immediately. <coughs> so there'll be no further um, public uh, activity taking place by the board this evening. So I'm going to wish everyone well and thank you all. Um, and with that, I'll ask um, if there's a motion to move into executive session for the purposes of discussion of collective bargaining matters. So moved. So, moved. so we have a motion by Mr. Mackey, seconded by Mr. Holland. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's five to zero. Mr. Crapman, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Mackey? Aye. Ms. Wellman? Aye. Mr. Holland? Aye. The chair votes aye. We're now in executive session. Have a great evening. And uh, this next board meeting for um, my colleagues will be on April 9, um, I believe, at 7 p.m. <laughs>